Smart bins and power bins are critical for your workflow. Knowing how to set them up and use them properly will allow you to keep focused on your edit, keep you in the creative flow for longer, and ultimately produce better work. So let me show you how to do it. Okay, so we're on the media page, and this is the usual screen you see. We've brought some media in on the left side here. So if I go over to the right-hand side, we'll click these three dots, and we'll turn on Smart Bins, Show Smart Bins, and Show Power Bins. Now, we can see on the left side here that we have two new windows, one for Smart Bins, and one for Power Bins. Smart Bins, what are they? Why are they useful? How can you use them to be more effective editing? Let me show you. Say, for example, I have all this footage, all these files in my media pool. Within these folders, there's a bunch of different footage. There is iPhone footage, Sony A7S III footage, there's GoPro footage, there's Insta360 footage. I want to be able to quickly sort and quickly find certain files within all of these folders. What I can do is I can right click where the smart bins are and add a smart bin. Say for example, I would like to show all footage at 30 frames per second. If I create the smart bin, name it 30 FPS, and then I can match all, drop down menu, I'll go to the clip details, metadata clip details. And then if I scroll down and I toggle on shot frame rate is and then I'll go to 30 frames per second here. So if I create this smart bin, all of a sudden within this one folder here, my smart bins, every single piece of footage that was shot at 30 frames a second is in this folder. So I can do the same. So if I add a smart bin, 60 FPS. So same thing again, I'll go down to 60. So I also know that some of the shots are 59.94. I don't just want my 60 FPS. I also want the 59. So if I do the same thing, select 59, instead of all, I'll do any. So it basically means any 60 FPS shot or any 59.94 will go into this new smart bin, 60 FPS. So I'll create it and here we go. Now you can see that all my 59.94 FPS shots and all my 60, they are inside this folder here, 60 FPS. Okay, say I want to quickly access all my DJI footage. So I'll do add smart bin. All my DJI footage starts with the three letters DJI. So either the Insta360 or the drone footage, we'll start with this. If I do metadata clip details and I type in DJI, there we go. Now we've got another folder with all the DJI footage. So this is a really useful way to quickly access a large number of files with certain properties. Now, when we go to edit, if I go over to the edit tab here, so these are the smart bins that we created in the media pool. And when I come to edit on my timeline here, I've got access to all my 30 FPS, all my 60 FPS, and all the DJI. Whenever you're setting up your media and your media pool, you can also add keywords to each uh, video clip. So if you're organized and you spend the time setting up your keywords, like I have here with beach, ocean, uh, Bondi Beach, if you spend the time setting up your metadata correctly for your files, each of these keywords that you've set up will appear here in your smart bins. So if I just toggle down here, you'll see that any footage that I've labeled with the, with the keywords will appear in a smart bin. So I do recommend taking the time out at the beginning of your edit to organize and set up keywords for your footage. It just means like once it's done once, every time you come back to these folders, it'll all be here, it'll all be organized, it'll be so easy to find footage, and it'll just make, as you go through the process of editing over months, years, it'll just get quicker and quicker and you'll just be more and more organized. So it is worthwhile setting up your keywords. Power bins are also very, very critical for your workflow. The reason being, if you're editing videos, for example, if you're making YouTube videos, there's going to be a number of assets, text, sound effects, music, even your fusion compositions that you'll be using over and over during each video. So the power bins basically allows you to set up folders with assets that you use over and over to allow you to easily access 
through every project. So for example, if I go back here and you can see I've got my YouTube project library. Now I was in this project, Power Bins and Smart Bins. If I click through, let's just go back to the media tab here and open up this project. Now you'll see on the left side, all those Power Bins that I just had in the Smart Bin and Power Bins project are all here. They're all still showing because you've set them up and they're accessible through every single project. So if I start a new project, let's say uh, YouTube, um, let's say relinking files. So this is gonna be the next video, relinking files. So I create that. Again, new project, blank timeline. There's no media even inside this project, but we have our smart bins. We've got all our assets set up and ready to be accessed for the next project. This will save you so much time. Another thing we can do here, if I want to make changes to this clip, so for example, let's just say this part here where the clip comes out, I'll add a keyframe and I'll play it forward. So I'll put a keyframe there and a keyframe there. Say I speed that little part of the clip up and smooth it out here. So let's just play it back. Okay, like obviously we wouldn't use that, but let's just say we've changed this clip. We've changed the retiming. Okay, so we've made some changes to this clip. We've changed the retiming and let's just cut it here. We'll just cut that part, delete, and this part here as well. So this is our final clip and we've retimed it. We're happy with the speed. There we go. So if I take this clip, Go back to my media pool and I will just drag it into my power bin. So let's just name it Golf Club Speed Round. Okay, so that, that piece of footage is in there. It's got the effects added and it's put into the power bin. Let's jump into another project. So say we're working on something in the future and we need that same clip. So let's go back in here. Okay, so we go into the power bin, we can see that that clip that we have made our retiming changes to is now living in our power bin. And simply, I'll just grab it, pull it in. And if I just have a look at this clip, you can see those retiming adjustments that we made in the previous project and we have the effects added. So if you know you're gonna be reusing certain pieces of footage, or maybe you have created a a clip with perfect time and maybe it's drone footage you've speed ramped it perfectly you've made all your changes you're super happy with it and you know that you're going to reuse that clip at some point for another edit you can build out a fol folder in your power bins and you could just name it let's say speed ramped drone footage and then i'll just take all the speed ramped drone clips that i've saved in the power bin and now they live inside that folder. So if I go back to any project, go to my power bin, we have the speed ramp drone footage all saved. So power bins are a super, super powerful way to keep you focused on your editing, allowing you to stay in the creative flow and ultimately produce better edits for yourself, for your social media and for your clients. I'd highly recommend setting them up at the beginning and as you work through your edits within your project library, this one, as you work through your projects, your power bins will build up and your assets will build up and it'll all be organized for you. So every future project is just going to get faster. You're going to get quicker at editing and it's just going to make your life a lot more fun when it comes to the edit and allowing you to keep focused on the creative side. Okay, so in the next video, I'm gonna take you through relinking media. So sometimes when you move media from folders or you change the names of folders in your finder, DaVinci is gonna struggle finding it because you've changed the name. So the next video, I'm gonna walk you through how to relink your files, how to relink your folders, and basically get your project back up and running.